Here are the video solutions for Pearson Edexcel Functional Skills Maths Level 2. Um, this is section A, which is the non-calculator section from past paper 4. So question number one, we need to work out the fraction that were made by SIM card only. Now, we know that she has done 19 pay as you go and 57 SIM card with handsets. So that is 19 plus 57 which is 57 plus 20 take away one, so that's 76. So therefore 114 minus 76 would be um, the SIM card only. Four minus six can't be done, so one becomes zero, four becomes 14, 14 minus six is eight, 10 minus seven is three. So she has made um, 38 SIM card only, so SIM only equals 38, so what is 38 as a fraction um, as a fraction of 114? Well, that is simply 38 over 114. However, this fraction can be simplified because we have um, even numbers top and bottom. If I divide the top by two, I get 19, and the bottom, if I divide by two, I get 57. Now I know that although it looks like we've got two prime numbers here, um, I used to play quite a lot of darts and I knew that triple 19 was 57, so I can divide top and bottom by 19. 19 divided by 19 is one, 57 divided by 19 is three. So the fraction that um, were sim only is one third. Question number two, Grace and James share 72 pounds in the ratio four to five, so let's just write that down, Grace, James four to five. So what that means is Grace gets four ninths and James gets fifth ninths. And we're talking in ninths because four plus five is nine. So James gets five ninths of 72 pounds. So here we're working at a fraction of a total. So we take our total, we divide by the number on the bottom and multiply by the number on the top. 72 divided by nine is eight. Eight times five is 40. So James gets 40 pounds. Show a check of your working. Well, we've done 72 divided by nine times five equals 40. So therefore, if I do 40 divided by five multiplied by nine, do I get 72? And the answer is yes, I do. I, although doing this check is actually much harder than, much more complicated than just making, just, than just doing the original question, which seems a bit ridiculous in my opinion. But anyway, just working the question backwards, do we get 72? And yes, we do. Question number three, uh, the total value of the loyalty points is £17.50 and he gets three times the value if, if he exchanges them for travel vouchers. So I need to multiply this by three or just add 17.50 three times, which might be slightly easier. I could say this is the lazy way. So zero plus zero plus zero is zero. 15, five carry one, 21, 22 carry two, two, three, four, five. So it's, he's got 52 pounds, 50p in travel vouchers. Okay, so Brian buys two ferry tickets and they are 33.25 and 29.00. So what is the total? Well, that is 25 there. Three plus nine is 12, carry one, three, four, five, six. So ferry tickets, come to 62.25 so he'll have to pay the difference which is the difference between 62.25 and 52 pounds 50 so the difference means we are subtracting so 5 minus 0 is 5 2 minus 5 can't be done so 2 becomes a 1 2 becomes 12 12 minus 5 is 7 1 take away 2 can't be done, so 6 becomes 5 and the 1 becomes an 11. 11 minus 2 is 9, 5 minus 5 is 0, so it's £9.75, the difference. Okay, on to question number 4. I really struggle with this question and the reason why I struggle with it is I saw this picture as kind of looking a bit like a house, uh, a rectangle with a triangle on top, but we need to remember, we need to try and imagine this triangle is the uh, is the top of a... Uh, is the top of a candle. It's a, like a three-dimensional drawing. As soon as I saw it in 3D, this made much more sense. So first of all, um, we are going to work out, well, the area of the cross-section, which is a, um, a triangle. The formula for the area of a triangle is base times by height divided by two. So 10 times by eight divided by two. 
which is 40 divided by 2, sorry, it's not, it's 80 divided by 2, which is 40 square centimetres. Now, we've been told that the volume of a prism is the area of the cross section, which is 40 times the height, which is 6. So 40 times by 6 is 240, and now we're dealing in cubic centimetres. Okay, so we know that one litre is 1,000 cubic centimetres. So in other words, 1,000 millilitres is 1,000 cubic centimetres. So therefore, um, 240 cubic centimetres is 240 millilitres. And if we, we want to turn that back into litres, so that is 0 0.24 litres. Okay, so what we need, so what have we actually calculated there? We have calculated that for one candle you need 0 0.24 litres. So 0 0.24 litres of wax for one candle. Okay, let's uh, have a think about what we need to do next. So ZSU's got a five kilo bag of wax and one kilo makes 1.2 litres of melted wax. So what we need to do now is five multiplied by 1.2. Now, uh, 0.2 is 2 tenths, which is the same as 1 fifth. So we've got 5 times by 1 plus 5 times by 1 fifth. 5 times by 1 is 5, and a fifth of 5 is 1, and 5 plus 1 is 6. So what we have here is we have 6 litres of wax, and we know that we need 0 0.24 litres for one candle. So how many 0.24s go into 6? In other words, what is 6 divided by 0 0.24? Now, this seems quite challenging without a calculator. Let's turn it into fractions. Remember that the line of the fraction means divide, 0 0.24. Now, 6 divided by 0 0.24 is the same as 60 divided by 2.4, which is the same as 600 divided by 24. Now this fraction can be simplified. That is the same as 300 divided by 12, which is the same as 150 divided by six. Um, I can divide top and bottom by three now, um, which is the same as 50 divided by two, and 50 divided by two is 25. So she can make 25 candles, although I'm not really sure that was what the answer, um, what the question was asking. Um, is Zia correct? She thinks she can make at least 20 candles. Um, so yes, Zia is correct. as she can make oops, 25 candles. So this last bit might seem quite complicated. All we're doing, I often, uh, when I'm teaching people, I ask them, well, what is eight divided by four? Everyone says two. When I say 80 divided by 40, most people say 20, but it's still two. So if you multiply both numbers by 10, you still get exactly the same answer. In fact, it doesn't matter what you do to the two numbers, as long as you multiply them or divide them by the, the same figure, the answer is still the same. So here we've multiplied both numbers by 10, we're still gonna get the same answer. We multiply them by 10 again, we'll still get the same answer. Now we've divided both numbers by two, by two, and then by three, it doesn't matter what we do, we still are gonna get exactly the same answer, which is 25 candles. So that last question, quite a challenge. And that takes us to the end of section A. Okay, so on to question number five. Um, the question wants us to work out the percentage change in the modal weight of a baby from 1998 to 2018. So 1998 to 2018, and we know that in 1998 it was 7.7 .7 pounds. Now, uh, we need some information about 2018. 2018 is up here. Now the modal value is the most frequently occurring one, so there are 167 3.3 kilos. So 2018 is 3.3 kg. Now the modal weight in 1998 was 7.7 .7 pounds. So what we need to do is use this uh, conversion graph to convert 7.7 .7 pounds into kilos. So seven pounds is here, eight pounds is here. So 7.2468. So it's gonna be halfway between these two lines here. So actually pretty much where I've done that red dot. So I'm just gonna go one down and then it's to this line here and then it's halfway between this line and the one in uh, beneath it. So we get to this point uh, here. And if we just go down, we can see that this corresponds to 3.5 kilos. 
So in 1998, the modal weight was 3.5 kilos and it's gone down to 3.3 kilos. Now what we need to do is remember that to calculate a percentage change, it is the difference divided by the original multiplied by 100. So here the difference is 0 0.2 kilos. So 0 0.2 divided by what it was originally, it was originally 3.5 before it decreased, times by 100. And um, unfortunately when we do this calculation, we get a fairly nasty number, but it does say to the nearest whole number. So we've got 5.714%. So to the nearest whole number, well this is a seven, so we'll round that up to 6%. So that is a 6% decrease. Okay, question number six. Okay, so one centimeter um, on the grid. So this is um, these squares are one centimeter by one centimeter. The key thing is the length of the house is 36 meters. So this length here is 36 in real life. On the centimeter grid, it is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine centimeters represents um, 36 meters. So therefore, one centimeter. Well, that is nine times less than one, so I need to divide this other number by nine, and and that makes me feel good because I know that 36 is in the nine times table, 36 divided by nine is four. So one centimeter on the grid represents four meters on the ground. Okay, so for this one we know that um, the extension has a width of 10 meters. Well, we know that one centimeter is four meters, so 10 meters, that is how many times greater than four? Uh, well, 10 divided by 4 is 2.5, so that is 2.5 times greater. So therefore, the corresponding uh, number in centimetres is 1 centimetre times 2.5, so 2.5 centimetres. So we know that the extension runs the length of the house, and it's also 2.5. So if I just draw a straight line up to halfway between here and here on either side, and connect it, this is my extension. Now it says here that the roots grow to a maximum length of 20 meters from the center of the tree. So we know that, uh, let's just double check my scale, one centimeter is four meters. Oh, let me just write it up here. One centimeter equals four meters. So therefore, if 20 meters is gonna to correspond to how many centimeters? Well, that is five times greater than four. So multiply one centimeter by five. Um, so this will be a five centimeter circle on um, on this map here, uh, on the on the plan. Um, so the roots of the tree grow in a circular shape, and they grow to a maximum length of twenty meters. In other words, five centimeters from the centim uh, from the center of the tree. So five centimeters, one, two, three, four, five, and it's uh, in a circle. So I'll do another radius um, in the other direction. One, two, three, four, five. So this quarter circle here will look like that. So we can see that um, the extension will go over the roots and as a result, um, will the extension need deep foundations? Um, yes, it will, as we can see clearly from uh, the drawing above. Here are the video solutions for Pearson Edexcel Functional Skills Maths Level 2. Um, this is section B, which is the calculator section and this is past paper four. So let's take a look at question number one. So the recipe says we need to be at 350 degrees Fahrenheit and Johan sets the oven temperature to 190 degrees C. So what I'm gonna do is work out, well, what is 350 degrees Fahrenheit in Celsius? So the Celsius am amount is five lots of the Fahrenheit amount, which is 350 minus 32, and that is all divided by nine. So C is five times 350 take away 32, which is 318 divided by nine. So therefore the Celsius is 176.6 recurring degrees. Um, and that is degrees C, of course. So Johan sets the oven to 190 whereas it should have been 176.6, so he set the oven too high. So has Johan set the oven to the correct temperature for this recipe? The answer is no. Okay, so for question number two, what we have here is a net of a cylinder. Whenever you've got a rectangle with a circle on the top and on the bottom, 
and doesn't matter whereabouts they are on the top or the bottom that is the net of a cylinder so let me just do a quick sketch of a cylinder um, so I'll try and show that it's vaguely three-dimensional that's not a brilliant effort but uh, there we go hopefully you've got the idea sorry this bit here should probably have been a little let's see if I can tidy that, that up a little bit there we go let's go again so that's a little that's a little bit better okay so one centimeter represents five centimeters on the 3d object so each square here is five centimeters so 5 10 15 20 so the height of this cylinder is 20 centimeters and the other dimension is the radius of the um, of the circle here so it's 5 10 across so the radius is 5 so the other dimension I would put in well, you could put in a radius of five centimeters like so, or you could say it's 10 centimeters going from this point here to this point here. In other words, that would be um, a 10 centimeter diameter or a five centimeter radius. There we go. There is a fairly rubbish um, sketch of a 3D cylinder. Well, cylinder is 3D. Uh, kind of difficult using this computer package, but that's the, hopefully with a pencil and paper, uh, sorry, pencil and rubber, you can probably do a slightly better job than that. Okay, question number three, we uh, need to plot engine size 2.3, average fuel consumption 36. Okay, so we've got engine size in litres along the bottom. So it goes from two, it goes one, zero, one, two, three, four. So we're going up in ones. Um, so each faint line is 0.2. So 2.3 is halfway between 2.2 and 2.4. This is gonna be quite difficult to plot, especially because my pen writes sort of quite, uh, it's kind of hard to do a tiny little dot. Uh, anyway, so it's 2.3 and have a fuel consumption of 36. So um, we're going up in tens, so that means each faint line is a two. So 36 is this line here, and we are going across, I've uh, forgotten what it was now, 2.3. Okay, so here's two, 2.2, 2.4, so it's kind of in the middle about there. There we go. Draw a line of best fit on the scatter graph. Okay, so let's get a uh, let's get a line ready. So a line of best fit um, is a line that cuts through the middle of all these data points, trying to keep more or less the same number above and below the line. If I ask ten people to do this, ten people might have a slightly different line, and all ten might be equally valid. So um, as I said, it's got to go right through the middle. So that would be a terrible line of best fit. That would also be a terrible line of best fit, but you know something like so would seem about acceptable. Again, um, it's a shame that it has to be drawn so thick um, using this package here. Um, if you're using a sharp pencil, you get a very thin line and get a much more accurate answer. Okay, so I've done my line of, um, of best fit there. So C, I imagine we need to look up a value, use the line of best fit to work out something else. Okay. Uh, Mikel buys a car with an engine size of 4.2 litres, so we want to work out the an estimate for the average fuel consumption. So here is 4.2, so we're just going to go up until we hit the line of the graph, which I think is just the line above the 20, so that will correspond to 22 miles per gallon. The mark scheme might say something slightly different. You might have come up with something slightly different, but as long as you've shown that you can draw a vaguely accurate line of best fit and use it correctly to estimate other values, then that's all that this question's about. So I think it's 20, approximately 22 miles per gallon. What type of correlation is shown in the scatter diagram? Well, uh, we can draw a line of best fit, so that is a good sign that there is correlation. The line is going down, so when it goes down, that is a sign that there is negative correlation. Question number four, work out. Um, so this question is all about bid mass. So we've got brackets, so we need to take care of the brackets first. So it's three cubed, take away four squared. And three cubed is 27, four squared is 16. 27 uh, minus 16 is 11. So the question is now 11 plus seven divided by 2.5. So that is 18 divided by 2.5 and 18 divided by 2.5 is 7.2. For part B, um, very difficult comparing fractions and de decimals and percentages. What I would do is convert all of them into percentages. So if it's a decimal, we multiply by 100 to turn it into a percentage. So this is 50%, this is 53%, this is obviously 47%. For five ninths, it's five divided by nine multiplied by 100. 
and that comes to 55.5%. And for 4 sevenths, that is 4 divided by 7 multiplied by 100. Remember to turn a fraction into a percentage. It's top divided by bottom times by 100. And this comes to 57.14%. So the smallest is what? Smallest is 47%, which was originally 47%. So that one's gone. Uh, the next smallest, we've got 50%, uh, so it's 0 0.5. The next smallest is the 53%, so 0 0.53. The next smallest is 5 ninths. And the least smallest or the biggest is 4 sevenths, and we're done. So you can see how much easier, easier that is if we turn them all into percentages first. Okay, so for question number seven, we are trying to compare the surface area of this new cylinder with these dimensions to the old one, which had a surface area of 27,332 square millimetres. So let's just um, think about a cylinder. A cylinder has a circular top and a circular bottom. Now, the formula for the area of a circle is pi r squared. So we have two pi r squareds to begin with. So in fact, maybe it helps if I just do a quick sketch. Here is a cylinder not a great drawing. Um, so we've got the surface area is a circular top and a circular bottom. Now this curved surface area here, if, if we were to cut down here and fold it out, it would be it would turn into a rectangle with which would have a height of 154 millimeters. And the other dimension would be the circumference of um, the circle here. So it's going to be two pi r squared plus 154 multiplied by 2 pi r. Okay, so um, this is how we work out the surface area of a cylinder. There is a formula which some people might just learn, which is 2 pi r squared plus um, 2 pi r h. 2 pi r squared for the circular top and the circular bottom, and 2 pi r h, the 2 pi r is the circumference multiplied by the height to give you so this part here is the curved surface area okay so two times uh, the radius which if the diameter if the diameter is 52 then the radius is half that so the radius is 26 so it's 2 times 26 times 26 times by pi so that is that part there plus 154 times by 2 times by 26 times by pi so I'm just checking pi at the end uh, so 2 times 26 times 26 is 1352 times pi I'll just keep it in terms of pi for now plus this comes to 8008 pi so 1352 plus 8008 comes to 9360 pi um, so that means 9,360 9, lots of pi. So 9360 times by pi is 29,405.30. Carries on for a few more decimal places. Um, is that more or less? Um, so there is a greater surface area. So she is wrong. Her her, new, her design will use more. Uh, will will use more metal. So you can say she is wrong. There we go. Because this is larger than the um, 27,332 from, from the old can. Question number six. Okay, so what's the probability that a person chosen at random passed their driving um, test on the first attempt? Well, 118 people passed on the first attempt out of a total of how many? So all we need to do is just add all of these values up and that comes to 263 and this fraction cannot be simplified so that is our answer 118 263 seems a bit of an unsatisfactory answer but there it is what is the probability that a person chosen at random did not pass their driving test so that is simply one minus the previous answer the number that did pass um, their driving test on the first attempt now one in terms of 263 is 263 263rds. So minus 118 um, comes to 145, 263. And again, this can't be simplified. Again, doesn't seem very satisfactory, but that is um, the fraction in its simplest form. Okay, so if Keely is using this payment plan, how much will she pay? So she'll pay two fifths of 4,200. So here we're working out a fraction of a total. So we're gonna take the total 
and we're going to divide by the number on the bottom and then multiply by the number on the top and that comes to £1,680 and she also is going to have the 24 times 11290 and that comes to £2,709.60. So in total she will pay uh, 1680 plus 270960 which is £4,389.60. Now that is greater than the original cost of the car which is 4200 so how much extra does she pay? Well that is 438960 minus 4200 and that is a total or well, is an overpayment of £189.60. So for question number nine, we just want to work out whether the percentage of sugar is greater in cookie dough than in grapes. Well, in grapes, 15 out of a total 92 grams is sugar. So to turn that into a percentage, it's the top divided by the bottom, multiplied by 100, and that comes to 16.3%. So that is the sugar content in grapes. And for cookie dough, it's 110 grams out of a total 610. So the calculation is 110 divided by 610 times by 100, and that comes to just over 18%. So that is the CD, the cookie dough. So the cookie dough is uh, greater. Ryan thinks that there is a higher percentage of sugar in the cookie dough than the grapes. So yes, Ryan is correct. Okay, let's take a look at question number 10. So we know that the perimeter is 38.2. So if we subtract the 13.9, the base from 38.2, what do we get? We get 24.3. So these two sides add up to 24.3. But guess what? These sides are the same length. That's what these dashes mean. An isosceles triangle has two sides that are the same. So each side, if each side is the same, then one side will be just half of 24.3. And 24.3 divided by 2 is 12.15. So A is 12.15 centimetres. Okay, and which calculation is suitable as a check using estimation? Well, our original calculation was 38.2 minus 13.9, and then we divided that by 2. So using estimation, we could call 38.2 40, we could call 13.9 14, and divide that by 2. And so that is this answer here. Question number 11, write 6.8 as a decimal. Well, to convert a percentage into a decimal, we divide by 100. 6.8 divided by 100 is 0 0.068. Okay, so the next question that we need to be careful here is that we're just working out the interest, not the new balance. So Jess puts in 3,800 pounds and it's gonna increase by 2.4% per year and it's, um, going to be compound interest. So that means in year two, she'll get interest on interest. Now the multiplier for 2.4% is 2.4 divided by 100, which is 0 0.024. But if we want, so we would use this multiplier, we would multiply 3,800 by this figure here if we wanted to calculate 2.4% of it. But we don't really want to calculate 2.4% of it, we want to increase it by 2.4%. This is the multiplier to work out a percentage of an amount, but if you want to uh, calculate a percentage increase, we just add one to this number. So 0 0.024 becomes 1.024. And we need to multiply it um, by this multiplier for every year it's earning interest. So we're gonna multiply by 1.024 three times, or 1.024 to the power of three, and that comes to a total of £4,080.22. That is going to be the balance after three years. So the interest is simply £4,080.22 take away 3800 and that is uh, £280.22. Actually, it wasn't exactly 22, it was 212189. 20, I just rounded to two decimal places since that seems an appropriate number of decimal places when we're dealing with uh, money. So £280.22 is the final answer for that one. So £280.22. 
Okay, so for this question, what we need to do is uh, take a look at Andy's medical center. Uh, let's work out the mean number of patients per doctor. So we need to add all of these values together and that comes to a total of 9,460 and divide by the number of doctors, which is six. So that comes to 1576.6 recurring. So that's approximately the same as 1577. So Andy's Medical Center 1577, the average in the UK is 1734. So we can say um, on average, um, there are fewer patients per doctor at Andy's Medical Center. So we could say uh, 1577 versus whatever it was before, 1734. Probably don't need to state those uh, numbers. And uh, we now need to think about the consistency. Now the consistency is to do with the range. Now the range is the biggest, take away the smallest. So that is 1847 minus 1240. So that is a range of 607. Now 607 is smaller than 826. So we can say um, the number of number of patients per doctor is more consistent at Andy's Medical Center uh, because the range is smaller. Words to that effect will be fine. And that's it, we are now done.